Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Kyrgyz Ontario virtual session. Thank you for, thank you very much for coming, attending this session today in a sunny day. I hope everyone is safe and uh, fighting with the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Shaz, the first president of Kyrgyz Ontario, and the host of this uh, today's session. Also attending today's session, without the, uh, uh, including the participant, is uh, uh, our Prem Prasad, vice president. Uh, of Cricket Ontario, Coach uh, Baruch Kermani, and Coach uh, Sherry Budu. Let me uh, introduce the today's speaker is uh, Faisal Iqbal, former Pakistan Test and International uh, Cricketer. He is a level two ECB uh, certified coach, batting coach for PSL Karachi King, batting coach for the Martha Arabian P10 International League in UAE, and a batting coach for men's UAE, UAE team in the Emerging Asia Cup in 2018. He played for Pakistan under 15 as a, as a captain in 1996. And he played the U19 World Cup 2000 as a, as a vice captain. As a teenager, he was one of the heavyweights, middle order batsmen in Pakistan domestic career structure with over 12,000 runs in his, to his credit. He has played over uh, uh, 225 first class games with uh, more than uh, 28 uh, centuries and 50 50s. He has, at the tender age of 18, he was selected to play for Pakistan. He made the uh, he made his ODI debut in 2000 versus Sri Lanka and last, last ODI he played in 2006 versus West Indies. At the age of 19, he played his first uh, test in 2001 versus New Zealand and, he, and the last uh, test uh, played in 2010 versus Australia. He played altogether 26 tests for Pakistan. He played in an era when, when uh, Pakistan star middle order batsman uh, Imzimam ul Haq, Yunus Khan, and Muhammad Yusuf were in their prime. He has a century in both uh, both format in his, his career also. He is well known for his positive and motivational attitude throughout his career, especially the 14 years with the Pakistan national team. 
and now he is making his place in the coaching area. Today, he will be speaking to us about the motivating yourself for higher level and sharing his experience while he was youth and hard work he put it in to make the place for for under 15, under 19 at the national team. Without further ado, it is my pleasure and the Cricket Ontario uh, uh, pleasure to uh, introduce a good friend of mine and also a friend of uh, Prem and Farooq and other coaches and a well-known personality in the cricket, Mr. Faisal Iqbal. Faisal, welcome to the welcome to join the Cricket Ontario virtual session round with the virtual applause. As long as you cannot hear the applause, but virtual applause. And I hope that uh, the people will enjoy uh, this uh, this session. Firstly, uh, everybody, uh, welcome here, and um, hopefully you guys are safe and uh, looking after yourself. And I'm sure uh, because of this COVID-19, we all are going through a different phase of uh, uh, in, in our everyday routine and the cricket life we are going through with it. Uh, I'm sure you guys are getting used to with it and uh, preparing yourself for your next coming assignment. My uh, for my main uh, concern for this uh, uh, session is uh, for the junior cricketers and for the senior cricketers, especially for the junior cricketers, uh, how to prepare themselves uh, and how to how to uh, take up all the challenges which you guys play uh, and face all around when you play cricket in in, uh, in, in from the associate countries, because uh, with my experience of uh, working and uh, playing around some associate countries, uh, there's a huge difference of uh, player development process and uh, totally different uh, kind of uh, a mindset required uh, to, uh, to prepare yourself compared to the test playing nations, you know, how the, the test playing nations have their proper, proper training system and everything. So uh, just by looking at that, uh, uh, I'm going to start with a couple of important pointers about uh, trusting your game. Uh, Trusting your game is uh, when we, I'm sure you all uh, know when we play cricket, when we go for a, a match or go for a training session, sometimes we always had two kind, two sets of mind in ourselves of uh, preparing a game. Sometimes players are thinking before the game, oh, it might not going to happen. Oh, I might, am I going to play? Am I not going to play? If I get a chance, will I going to get wickets or not? Uh, will like score runs or you know these kind of uh, negative thoughts with those thoughts all you need to do is uh, trust your game and your technique whenever you have uh, demons in your mind before a game at any level just keep that thing aside trust your game and trust your technique and go with it uh, secondly well, one of my important mantra which I carried throughout my life and my career is uh, always make winning a habit. Because uh, if when we play, sometimes we don't uh, make a mind of winning it. You know, I'm talking about different countries' mindset. Like, you know, when the players I've seen, when they play from associate nations or, uh, you know, the upcoming nations, the mindset of those players uh, are totally different compared to the mindset of uh, the, the regular uh, test playing nations, or you can say even when the associate teams play each other. So there you need to have a winning habit, a mind of just, just to win and you don't have anything else to think about. So winning it is a habit and as I always say, sky is the limit. So all you need to do is to prepare yourself uh, you know, whichever uh, part of the country you're touring or even uh, go, uh, playing the club game or, you know, uh, going through to your preparation and everything. Secondly, uh, decision making. In cricket, decision making is very important. You know, we, we always uh, think when we play, uh, if, if you are batting or if you are bowling, sometimes decision making makes you a better player and makes you a, a, a bad player. If you are good in your decision making, you will always uh, success, your, your success ratio will always be better than your, uh, uh, your bad form and bad days of cricket. So always uh, be good in your decision making. And uh, the two batsmen, if I want to speak to batsmen here right now first, I can tell them that uh, there's, to be a successful better, you need to be decisive in your making decisions. When you bat, 
when you go into a when you go into a situation game situation all you need to do is to just worry about at the present moment which you are playing what normally happens a player thinks too much in his mind and forget about the kare's game and you know and then uh, have an unnecessary pressure on himself and that unnecessary pressure will you know give uh, won't get the best out of you in your uh, game in your match preparation or whatever you had in your in 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 your process of developing so uh, this has always been one of my important uh, aspects of uh, preparation decision making then i come to a point uh, we say when you are batting at times you always think of which ball to hit and which ball to defend so i always say when you are playing you need to go with one set of mind i or attack if you go in a confused state of mind neither you will do an attacking uh, neither you will play in an attacking mode or neither you do a play in a defensive mode so all you need to have is one set of mind defense defense if you are attacking then attacking assess the situation which is always been the most important part uh, in a game plan assessing a situation once you are in the field as a bowler all you need to do is to watch your field i've always seen that myself as a captain that sometimes a bowler doesn't know where his field is and uh, before looking at his field he just he's just bowling and suddenly a batsman hit in in those areas and then suddenly the bowler is looking at the captain or you know looking at the fielder and saying oh he wasn't at this place where i wanted he is standing at the long wrong position so just to uh, uh, stay away from that problem i will ask all the bowlers before they even start to bowl always look at their own field always see if whatever which side of the wicket they are thinking of bowling have a discussion with the captain if he is standing with you uh, at mid off or mid on uh, adding adding into this conversation i will always say to the captains if the captains are there they should not field away from the bowlers the most uh, 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 surrounding field to be uh, for a captain is either he should be at covers short mid wicket mid off or mid on if they are inside the ring so a captain should always make sure be around uh, the bowlers and uh, just be there to guide them and for the bowlers i will say before you bowl before you plan anything always stick to your plan and don't change at the last moment because you always see whenever you change yourself at the last moment that's where the problem uh, starts to come up so as a bowler look at your field first bowl yourself and just stick to your plan same goes with the captains when the captains are there in the field all the players who are in the field should look up to the captain um, this is a problem which we face not only in junior cricket this is a problem we normally face even in uh, first class cricket as well list a cricket as well we find lots of players who don't have a good uh, basics of fielding Uh, are normally either day day dreaming somewhere around in the ground and you know uh, they are not focused and suddenly a catch gone there or run out gone there and then they missed it and one of those crucial moments you know change the game for the team so the basics of uh, bowling right now is to be uh, alert with the captain and captain have to be alert with the with the fielders then i come up to the wicket keepers to me wicket keepers play a very important role in cricket they why we always say the kick, wicket keeper is a backbone of the team because if a wicket keeper you have you have seen great wicket keepers all around the world they are constantly chatting they are constantly talking when a bowler is bowling you all the time hear them what they are saying of uh, you know motivating the bowlers and motivating the team so a wicket keeper is a backbone of the team and his job is to make sure that he see everything all around the ground when we are when the team is bowling and fielding it gives a, a lot of satisfaction to his captain also and to his bowler also a communication with the wicket keeper and the bowler 
also plays an important part uh, in, in a game and also in a development process. Once a keeper knows what his bowlers are bowling and once a bowler knows that his keeper is there to, uh, uh, to understand what he's bowling. If I, if I take as a spinner, sometimes lots of wicket keepers cannot pick up spinners, googlies, flippers or if they are off spinners, the straighter ones or if they are a left arm leg spinner, sometimes they just miss the, the arm ball and just stay in the middle at the back and ball goes from the leg side to the boundary. So the communication between the bowler and the wicket keeper is also very important. And uh, I, I can only tell to all the bowlers that if you have a good communication and a good friendship with wicket keepers, uh, this will always help uh, a lot to uh, a team uh, for their preparation as well. Then I come to the batsmen. Batsmen from opening till lower middle order, in today's world of cricket, even the lower middle order needs to be a good batsman. You get an additional chance if you are a good batsman uh, as a good bowler. And if you are a good fielder, that's an additional advantage as well. Nowadays, in top class cricket, even in the biggest leagues which we are involved in it, when we sign a player, we always look around his all-around aspects of the side. He can be one of the greatest fast bowlers, but sometimes if we see two to three good fast bowlers and we need to pick one, the additional advantage of his batting or fielding, you know, gives him that edge to get that contract. So these days, all the all the bowlers are also trying their level best to get to uh, to do some sort of good batting, you know, develop their batting skills. And uh, same goes with the wicket keepers as well. Gone are the days when wicket keepers just used to do the wicket keeping. Now, in today's world of cricket, you have to be a good batsman to be in the squad uh, 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 to play along with the team. If you are just a good wicket keeper and if you are not a good batsman, then I think it will be very hard for uh, for that player to you know uh, carry on and you know uh, even. Uh, have a good competition around with everybody. So, by looking at all all that, today's world of cricket has gone very competitive. I can give you an example of uh, Adam Gilchrist. Before Adam Gilchrist, it was uh, Australia used to have Ian Healy. Once Adam Gilchrist came into international cricket, the way he started batting, he just changed the dynamics of uh, wicketkeeper batsman role in world cricket. And since then, you can see great wicketkeeper batsmen was coming up from all different countries all around. The Sri Lanka produced Ramesh Kalu with Arna. Uh, India had Mahindra Singh Dhoni. And still they've got uh, new good wicketkeeper batsmen coming. So, just to give an advice to the wicketkeepers that you have to be a good batsman with your wicketkeeping skills to carry on uh, in a competitive world of cricket these days. Uh, uh, regarding the preparation, I can just tell you something about junior cricket, how we used to prepare ourselves when we were juniors. Junior cricket is the most important aspect in the preparation of your career. If you, if you are in your right direction, listening to your coaches and thinking about your own self of your game, that will be the turning point of your career. Normally what happens Players depend too much on coaches these days and uh, they don't realize how much self-assessment is important in today's world of cricket. If you are a good self-analysis, uh, a cricketer, you don't need a lot of help from a coach. You can prepare yourself by yourself. I, I can uh, give you my example. The reason what I did was I used my cricket analyst a lot in my team. I constantly used to speak to him to give me videos, show me videos, uh, assess myself where I'm wrong, uh, talk to my coach, uh, what do you think is my game? And sometimes as a coach, it's very important as well to judge that player where he is lacking. Sometimes psychologically, if a player is struggling, it does come into effect his performance as well. So as a coach, we need to think 
to speak to the players as well. If I know that a bowler is very good, I've seen him getting wickets at regular intervals and suddenly he's not getting wickets. Then definitely we need to speak to the bowler and ask him what is your problem? Are you unfit? Or you have any psychological issues or you know something. So I think these little aspects of, uh, of preparation helps as well. Junior World Cups, under 15 World Cup, under 19 World Cup plays a very important role in our careers. I can give you my example and there are many cricketers around the world uh, who are a product of under 15 World Cup, under 19 World Cup. Your cricket board, your cricket associations, ICC, they fulfill their jobs providing you a platform. All they ask you is to work hard and develop yourself as a good player to represent your state side, represent your national side and represent yourself at the highest level. So I think these World Cups helps a lot as well. Then I come to a, a mental side of the game. How much mental side of of an individual uh, works into play as, as prepare, preparation for your career. But sometimes players don't realize that if they are not mentally there in a game and if they are struggling, then definitely sometimes the skills are not uh, the issue. The core issue comes to from the mental side as well. And in cricket or in any professional sports, mental side uh, works very hard you know to prepare yourself for for a big game so always make sure to be uh, strong on your mind whatever you are learning from your coaches uh, and preparing yourself for your tournament or, tour or world cups or anything you have to be mentally very strong good and great players before the start of series, before the start of the bigger event, suddenly they just they just get down mentally in their mind. So many demons starts to uh, get into the mind, and but the way they were playing the the series, suddenly they start to play a different way uh, in the World Cup. Uh, many great players uh, played really well uh, in uh, the series, but suddenly the same player comes to the World Cup. <coughs> That's where I've seen a lot of players struggling as well. So the mental side is very important for preparation, which uh, I always tell the youngsters whenever they are uh, going for a tour, you're going for a, for, for a match, they should always look into that as well. Important, one more important point, dealing with pressure. The mental side also comes into dealing with pressure situation comes as well. Whenever we are dealing with pressure, that's where the time when mental toughness comes in. And mental preparation, whichever you've done uh, as a bowler, as a batsman, as a wicket keeper, that comes into play, all goes through your mind as well. So you have to be very strong. From there, next step comes the focus. How focused you are in your preparation, bowling, batting, fielding, going to a World Cup, going to a series, uh, especially to a teams where you know you have a rivalry with, that's where your focus and your mental aspect of the side game it to come into play. So always be focused, whatever you're doing, if you're practicing, if you're going for a match, your focus is very important. Uh, emotional control. Emotional control is very important in life uh, on, in decision making. Sometimes we as a batsman think of uh, playing a long innings and suddenly in the middle we just hit a silly shot and uh, from nowhere if somebody is being set on 25, 35 or probably 60 or something, they miss a big innings because of uh, emotional control. They're thinking too much in their mind of uh, going for a big innings or, uh, you know, uh, if they score 30, 40 runs, they think, okay, now I have achieved everything and le leave everything for the next coming batsman. It doesn't work like that. You have to be there and fulfill your responsibility. Be focused inside and control your emotions. So this, this was 
I, it, emotions played a really important part in my career because uh, you always want to hit a bowler out, out of the park, but you can't do that all the time because he is thinking as well and he has got ball in his hand too. So you have to be clever, you have to be sharp by assessing a situation and then uh, prepare yourself to work on. Attitude. Very important side of the game, attitude. Attitude comes when we, even if we are going for the training sessions. Sometimes uh, we go to the nets and we are thinking, oh, we are, we've been practicing every day. We are doing the same thing every day. You know, we're tired of doing everything the same day. I need something else. That's where your attitude comes into play. That's where you need to realize how important your practice session is, how important your preparation before the match is, and how important you are uh, developing yourself as a cricketer. So for me, attitude uh, plays a big role in uh, players' development and your mental side of aspect as well. Uh, performance. When we, when we go for a match or a practice, we always assess, I always used to assess my, whatever games I've played in the past and what used to be my preparation. So all that experience I always tell to the next generation of players when I work with the kids, uh, even when I work with uh, first class cricketers or any top level of cricketers, the mindset of a preparation comes into play a lot. You have scored hundreds and hundreds of runs, got uh, lots and lots of wicket, but always remember you have to start back again from zero. No matter as much performances you do, it just go back into the history books and you have to start it again, all the hard work. So you score 100, just enjoy that moment, enjoy that day, put, put that in a dustbin and move on for another 100. Same goes with the bowlers. You know, you've got five wickets, you're happy, enjoy the day, prepare yourself for the next game. And that's how the hunger, uh, the preparation for hunger, you know, it starts to develop into you and make you uh, a better cricketer. Concentration. You must have heard the great players, they always used to say, great players have great concentration. What is concentration? Concentration is something when you are playing, it also a very important part of your mental side as well. If you are a good player uh, and have a good concentration level of playing, you can play at any form of cricket. Either you can play T20 cricket, a uh, longer version of cricket. Your concentration level makes you develop yourself as a better player, will make you a uh, long way ahead as a bowler and as a batsman. So that has been a very important part in my career, working with all the great coaches I played under with, worked, played with lots of great players in Pakistan in that era. One of the greats, Inzamam, Yunus Khan, Mohamed Yusuf, the great coaches we had with us, the great Javed Miyadad, uh, the great uh, Bob Wulmer. So all of those coaches and players used to always think one thing, that our ultimate goal is to win. So whenever you have this winning habit with you of achieving something, there's no looking back of, of you not losing anything. So these are the most important points which I've just discussed with you, are core for development of any player at any level of cricket, either you're from the test playing nations or either you're from the associate playing nations. I have always uh, seen uh, good players coming from uh, Canada, uh, recently, even in US cricket, uh, Ali Khan has been playing T20 leagues all around the world. Recently, he was with us. So, uh, Rizwan Chima from, from Canada cricket. So, there are players coming from uh, uh, countries who don't play test cricket. And they are making themselves around the world. Rashid Khan is a brilliant example from Afghanistan. He's a player who's been playing all the T20 leagues around the world. Just imagine he he's coming from the same place where there, there are not many uh, cricket facilities. But I asked him how did he prepare himself. 
he said to me one thing that we don't had any facilities with us but we try to make uh, places where we can utilize ourselves and work hard by ourselves to become the better players and compete with the great players around the world so this has been my mantra of preparation uh, which i have just discussed with you are four points and uh, anything uh, you want to ask uh, any questions with any of you all you guys are welcome to ask me shah saab or farooq bhai prem bhai any player anybody is asked to ask me any questions yeah i think um, uh, faisal thanks a lot for a nice uh, uh, you know uh, sharing your experience and everything else uh, the one question that was put by farooq to me was that uh, when your younger in your younger days how much time did you put in in the preparation of fitness and how much time you put it in in the preparation for the skill did you hear me i i think this is some voice issue i can't hear uh, the the question properly yeah paru can you ask that question unmute unmute yourself first please Uh, my question is for you to. Sorry, I can't hear your voice. Now you can hear me, hear me now. Can you hear anybody? Uh, can you repeat the question because uh, there's some uh, problem. Okay. I, uh, I can't hear it properly. My question is for you: is how much time you spend when you are uh, for your younger days playing for under 15, under 19, or a test level, or any type of cricket that you play? How much time? you do for practice mental preparation or or uh, or for your season oh yes uh uh paru bhai you know in our part of the world when uh, when we were young kids we always used to just play 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 and play the only thing we know that when the sun was the sun sets our parents used to just tell us that you have to be in the house at sunset so once we are back from the school we were just playing 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 uh it it's also part of the development process that if you are under 12 under 15 you at least need to have 2 to 3 hours uh for yourself minimum uh for your preparation uh if you are under 15 or under 19 at least you should you should take out Two to three hours for yourself, where all you need to do is do skills work. Skills work is very important these days because uh, uh, a lot of players spend less time on skills training rather than spending time on gadgets or gyms and uh, you know discussions. I think they need to spend at least two to three hours uh, in the cricket ground to prepare themselves. Yeah, if they are in the junior crickets of under 15s and under 90s. Thank you. Anybody else has any other questions? Uh, please, uh, please ask at this time. Unmute your uh, un unmute your uh, uh, audio and uh, please uh, ask question. <clears throat> Okay, Prem, do you have any question? No, I, I'm expecting questions to come from our coaches. Yeah, the coaches. Are, yeah, I think I'm expecting from the participants. I I think Faisal, um, knowing that you have traveled all over the world, you've been in, been uh, um, in the U.S., you've been in New Zealand, you have, you spent a lot of time in England, so you know a little bit of our Canadian conditions. Uh, our youths have within three months, and then we we try. With them in the winter, what would you advise them uh, to to focus on when they have finished our winter camps? They're coming out into the summer. They're going into the league cricket. They're changing from one format into the next. How do you advise them to carry across what they learn in the winter programs into their actual games? Um. uh i think for that this is this is this is an issue uh, a global uh, issue you can say not a issue a global thing which happens everywhere around the world with kids uh, 
because there's a season and then there's an off season. So some of the kids, what they normally do in off season, they, they just play cricket in indoors or, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, I don't know how much backyard cricket is in Canada because backyard cricket is something you can even play uh, in your off season as well with your uh, uh, friends or brothers and, you know, in your family. So, uh, if, if there's a possibility of backyard cricket, you know, there's always, a, otherwise there's indoor cricket. And if you have played some good cricket where you have got uh, the, the video analysis done of your games, and if you have those videos with you of your own games, the way you have played, you can constantly watch them, assess them, uh, talk to your friends about it, uh, about your game. You can talk to your uh, batting partner, or a bowling partner, you can constantly be in touch with your friends, like a, probably a WhatsApp group or something like that, where you can share your ideas of uh, cricket. It's all about uh, talking cricket in that in that period of time. As much as you get involved and keep yourself busy uh, in cricket, whichever uh, time you can get in a day, uh, you will be uh, very fresh once you are back into your season. So. Problem is, once the season's over, uh, you know, there's, a, uh, uh, there's no cricket, then you get rusty when you don't think about it and when you don't play. So, wherever you get a chance, just play a little bit and think about it, watch yourself. Even by visualize, visualize playing helps a lot developing as a player. So, if you can visualize yourself playing, practicing in the nets, uh, anything you know you're, you're playing, you will keep yourself motivated, and it will help you out. So I think uh, you know that off season, if you try to keep yourself, find some place somewhere or the other, just to keep yourself playing, you will definitely be a better person, a better player, not trusty once the season gets started. Yes. Okay, thank you, Pascal, for your uh, time. Uh, and uh, nice presentation on behalf of the Cricket Ontario. I know you are meeting at uh, three o'clock, another conference call, and I will not take you much of your time. And I much appreciate for you to joining us today and sharing your experience. And I hope that everybody on the call have learned something from your talk. This talk will be, uh, we will be publishing this on the YouTube so uh, uh, more people will be watching it. So thanks a lot again, and we much appreciate it for you to join us today. Thank you very much, Shasab, and uh, thank you very much. All I'm going to say, uh, uh, thank you, Kermani Bhai, Prem Bhai, and everybody. Uh, just before going, I just want to tell all the players who are listening to me that make sure once you are there in your preparation, work as much hard as you can and enjoy the cricket which you are playing. Enjoy your training. Enjoy your time. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you will never going to succeed. So always enjoy whenever you are playing and doing anything. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vasalvai.